Space is a big place. We live on a planet which exists in a solar system. We circle a sun with other planets all around us. Our solar system is in a galaxy and our galaxy is a part of the universe. Science seeks to discover the mysteries of our universe. So what's better place to start than our very own solar system? Let's talk about days and seasons, gravity, and the moon. What is a day? You might describe a day as the time you get up to the time you go to bed. But when a scientist talks about a day, they are often talking about 24 hours that have gone by. That means the morning, afternoon, and night. A single day is how long it takes for the Earth to turn all the way around one time. We start counting a new day every night at midnight. To better understand, let's build a model of the Sun and Earth and of the solar system. So we're going to pretend that this right here is the Sun and this right here is the Earth. So first things first, the Earth actually spins like this and it spins over and over and over. So on this half of the Earth, the sun's not shining over there, but on this half of the Earth, it is. So the half of the Earth that's facing the sun, that's daytime, and the half of the Earth that's not facing the sun, that's night. So as it gets dark on one side of the Earth, it gets light on the other. And it's always this cycle. So while one side is day, the other side is night. And it takes 24 hours for the Earth to spin once all the way around. While the Earth is spinning, it's also orbiting around the sun, like this. And it does that over and over and over too. Once around like this, that's called a day. But when the Earth gets all the way around the sun like this, that's one year. But the Earth isn't alone in the solar system. There's also seven other planets that circle the sun, plus Pluto. Let me show you. You can do this along with me if you'd like, and there's lots of ways to build your solar system. I have two long pieces of paper here. You can use any strip of paper that you want. And then I'm going to be using some plastic lids to create my planets for my solar system. And you can either draw the planets for your solar system, color them in and design them. You could also use Play-Doh if you want a more 3D looking model. And so there's lots of ways to create the solar system. What I'm going to do is start by marking where each of my planets are going to go on my piece of paper. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to put these lids on to represent the different planets. So the first planet that I'm going to put on our solar system is Uranus. And that planet goes right here in the very center of both of my papers. So I'm just going to make a mark for it right here. Next, I'm going to put on a mark for Pluto. So I'm just going to put Pluto right here. I'm just going to draw Pluto as a tiny little circle. I'm going to put the sun right over here on this side of my paper and I'm just going to mark that using this big red circle here. I'm going to fold this piece of paper all the way here to where I know that Uranus is going to be. This really just means I'm going to fold this paper in half. So right there at that halfway point that's actually Saturn right here at this crease. So Pluto's this little circle right over here, and I'm going to fold that one right here into the center of our solar system. And that is going to give me Neptune. And I'm going to fold this one in right here to where we have Saturn. I'm going to put a mark right there that one is going to be our Jupiter. Okay, now we're going to do that one more time. I'm going to fold the sun right here into Jupiter. And right there is where we get the asteroid belt. I'm going to fold the sun right here to the asteroid belts. And what I'm going to be left with is Mars sitting right here.
Okay, so now it's time to actually put our planets on our map. So let's start with the sun right here. The sun goes out just to the very, very edge of our paper. Mercury, Venus, and Earth are three of the smallest planets. They're so small, they exist between the sun and the first mark on our paper, Mars. I'm going to draw three small shapes right here between the sun and Mars. And then I'm going to put on our first planet, which is going to be Mars. And I'm going to put that right there. Now I have the asteroid belt. So I'm just going to put on a couple of rocks for the asteroid belt to represent that. Now it's time for Jupiter. And Jupiter is a big red planet. So I'm just going to put Jupiter right there. Then next up comes Saturn. I'm going to put Saturn here. Then remember right there in the middle, we have Uranus. So that's gonna go right there. And then finally, we have Neptune. So Neptune's just gonna go right over here. And then this tiny little dwarf planet over here, I just drew in because that's Pluto and it's too small to even get a lid. So this is what our solar system looks like. So let's review. What is a day? What is a year? How many planets are in the solar system? Ever wonder why all the planets circle around the sun? That's because of gravity. NASA science calls gravity an invisible force that pulls objects towards each other. Anything that has mass also has gravity. Objects with more mass have more gravity. I got this definition from the NASA Space Place website. If you want to find out more about gravity, you can check there. So the more mass, the stronger the gravity is. The sun is the biggest and most massive thing in our solar system, which is why the planets are all stuck in their orbit around the sun. Earth is also massive, which is why there is gravity on Earth. The Earth's gravity pulls everything towards itself, like water down from a mountain, a ball down to the ground, and it's the reason you don't float away. Have you ever seen a shooting star? Well, it's not actually a star. That's just what we call it. It's actually a rock that was floating through space, usually a really big rock. That rock got close to the Earth and the Earth's gravity pulled it to the ground. Luckily for us, our Earth has an atmosphere, which burns most of those rocks up before they reach the Earth. The moon isn't so lucky. The moon has gravity that will pull rocks down to it, but the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. That means that those rocks crash into the surface. Let's run an experiment. I have a pie tin filled with flour. I also have this collection of rocks. Our pie tin is going to act like our moon and our rocks are going to be like our meteorites. Let's drop the rocks in the tin and see what happens. Do you see these big valleys that the meteorites made? Those are called craters. If you've ever heard of the man on the moon, his face was made by meteorites crashing into the surface. So our solar system is made up of eight planets, all spinning around the sun because of gravity. One day is the earth turning all the way around on its axis, and a year is the earth going all the way around the sun. The earth and the moon have gravity, which pull objects towards each other. The craters of the moon were created by meteorites crashing into the surface. If you have more questions about space, check out the NASA Space Place website in the description. For more videos like this, check out our Facebook or YouTube channel. And don't forget to visit our website at communitylibrary.net for more free encyclopedias and resources.